scientific approach to knowledge. Um, science has a specific way in which we um, investigate and find things out. And it's called the scientific method. It's based on experiment. That's what the word empirical means. The scientific approach to knowledge is empirical. It's based on experiment. It's not philosophy where we just sit around and think about things. The scientific method is not a rigid set of instructions, do this, 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 and this, and you'll get a paper that you can publish. It's not that tidy. It's, it's actually quite messy. But there's key characteristics in the scientific method process. And, and those are observation, formulation of hypotheses, experimentation, and formulation of laws and theories. So we'll talk about each of those briefly. Observations are also called data. This is things that can be observed, things that can be measured. It could be qualitative. What color is it? How hard is it? Does it bounce? It could be quantitative. How heavy is it? How long is it? Etc. cetera. Um, descriptions or uh, about the characteristics or behavior. So back in the 1700s, and I will be bringing up these little bits of chemical history I'm not going to test you on them, though, so don't worry about that. Antoine Lavoisier did some studies on burning things. How many of you guys like to burn stuff? I think most scientists, especially chemists, were at least closet pyromaniacs. There is just something fun about burning things, right? So Antoine Lavoisier, burning stuff. He's burning things in closed containers. So we know that you put a log in the fireplace and you burn it, it was heavy. You had to uh, grunt and carrying it in. After it's all burned, is it still heavy? No. It's not a log anymore. Now it's this ash, kind of grayish white, makes a mess everywhere, blows around, right? It has changed significantly. But where did all of that substance go? It's smaller and it's lighter. So Lavoisier was curious about that. He burns things in closed containers. What he found was very different than what happens in an open fireplace. The mass of the entire container was the same before and after burning. Now the mass of the thing that burned changed, but in the entire container, mass was conserved. It stayed the same. So that was an observation that leads to a hypothesis. A hypothesis is a tentative interpretation or explanation of the observation. It's like, well, what does this mean? Why is it this way? This is what I think. So he explained his observations of combustion, burning stuff, by hypothesizing that when a substance burns, it combines with a component in the air. Of course, we now know that that's true. It combines with oxygen, right? So that was his hypothesis. In order to be useful, a hypothesis has to be falsifiable, meaning it could be proven false. If it's something that cannot be tested, the hypothesis doesn't do any good. It has to be testable. So we take the hypothesis, or the hypotheses, the plural, and test them using experiments. In experiments, we try to control as many factors, variables as we can to get the information that we're looking for. The results of the experiment may support the hypothesis or they may show that it was ridiculous. In that case, you have two choices. You can just throw the hypothesis out, discard it completely, or sometimes you can salvage some of it and modify it. And then you take the new hypothesis and you test it again. And it goes around and around that way. From tested hypotheses that have proven to be good um, and from observations, we can get scientific laws and scientific theories. A law is a brief statement that summarizes past observations. It predicts future ones. So from Lavoisier's experiments, he came up with the law of conservation of mass. In a chemical reaction, Matter is neither cre created or destroyed. So with the Lego brick analogy, the, the bricks that you start with are the bricks that you end up with. 
No bricks are lost or created when you're just building with Lego blocks, right? Same thing with matter undergoing chemical reactions. Scientific laws are also tested over and over and over again. And occasionally somebody proves one wrong and then we have to change the way we think about things. Unlike state or federal laws, you cannot choose to violate a scientific law. You've heard of the law of gravity, right? You hold something out and you let go of it and what's gonna happen? It falls to the ground. You can't decide, I'm not gonna obey the law of gravity today, right? I'm gonna jump off the roof and I'm gonna go up instead of down. You can't do that. Scientific laws just describe how nature behaves. They tell us what's gonna happen. They allow us to predict what's gonna happen in the future. Um, and the human mind does a lot of this without your awareness. So as a child, you pushed things and you chewed on things and you know, little children are into everything. They're basically experimenting in learning what happens when I do this. And so you have all this knowledge in your head. You, you know from experience that if you walk into a wall, it's going to hurt and you can't go through the wall, right? Those sorts of things could be considered laws. So a theory is a little different. Um, the theory comes from the hypothesis and it explains why nature does that. So John Dalton, a little bit later after Lavoisier, um, came up with what we know now as the atomic theory. And the atomic theory explains the law of conservation of mass. He proposed that all matter is composed of small indestructible particles called atoms, like little Lego bricks. And since these particles are merely rearranged in a chemical change, the total amount of mass remains the same. You could have a little spaceship and you could take the bricks apart and put it back together and make a tree in a car or something. But the number and kind of bricks you started with is what you end up with. And so the mass of them would be the same. Theories are also validated by experiments. Um, we cannot prove things to be correct. That can be a little disturbing. We can't prove anything to be correct. We can only prove things to be wrong. And so theories that are accepted are, are ones that no one has been able to prove wrong. And scientists can be a little contrary. We like to, to try to prove somebody else wrong. And so people are always trying to you know, prove something wrong because that would be a great discovery. But theories are very important. They are the, as close to truth as we get in science. So theory is very important. We can use theories to predict future observations. So theories are never proven correct. You can't prove a theory correct. Yeah, He's, you can't do it. Because it may pass all of the tests based on the current level of knowledge. <coughs> but when a new discovery is made, like before there were microscopes, no one could see inside of a cell. Right? So you could have some, there, there were theories that were proven wrong when we gained the ability to see microscopic particles. Like the atom couldn't be destroyed. Yeah, so in Dalton's original theory, atoms could not be destroyed. Well, the atomic age, the nuclear age came. And we found out that, well, yes, in a nuclear reaction, atoms can be destroyed. And so then what we do with the atomic theory, we don't throw it out, but we qualify it. In a chemical change, matter is conserved. In a chemical change, an atom cannot be destroyed. So this is um, sort of a flow chart. It's rather circular. An illustration of the scientific method it's not a set of strict rules. It's actually quite messy. So generally, we start with an observation leading to a hypothesis, and then you test it with experiment, which either confirms or causes you to revise the hypothesis. 
you can actually spend your entire career in this little loop right here going around and around and around um, from observations we can get laws so what's the difference between a hypothesis and a law a law is based on observations by many people under many circumstances not just one person's observations and the law is not trying to say what is happening in terms of how and why it's just saying this is what happens and so the law can be tested and and confirmed or revised over and over and over again from hypotheses that have been well tested um, we get theories and again, those theories are subject to testing by experimentation. So that's the big idea of science right there. So here's, here's a possible exam type question. Which statement best explains the difference between a law and a theory? A, a law is truth, whereas a theory is a mere speculation. B, a law summarizes a set of related observations. A theory gives the underlying reasons for them. Or C, a theory describes what nature does, a law describes why nature does it. Anybody willing to shout up? Hmm? Is it C? C is a teaser. C is exactly backwards. Um, C is stated um, more succinctly than B, but B is actually the correct answer. If we reversed C and said a theory describes why nature does it and a law describes what nature does, that would be correct. 